Velkommen til Filmarkedet, programmet, hvor vi viser produktioner af ældre og dato, der ikke tidligere har været offentliggjort. Hello, Ole. Thank you for for coming and we can interview you. Thank you. Um, I have some questions um, I want to give to you. Yeah. And it's about um, the first thing I want you to explain. What is uh, elect- electromagnetic uh, radiation? Yeah. Uh, electromagnetic radiation is of course a common term for a lot of different electromagnetic fields and signals that we use from power line communication to uh, microwaves used for mobile phones and tablets, radio, television and so on. Mm. Okay. And and what have you found out with all your research uh, with the radiation? What well, to make yeah. a long story short, when you look in the scientific literature, it's obvious that, for instance, bacteria, different animals like rats, mice, ants and so on, and plants like tomato plants definitely are harmed and definitely should not buy and use these gadgets. Mm-hmm. And so what do you think will happen as a, in the long run if we use these Hope, Wi-Fi yeah. and mobile phones? Yeah, and hopefully not very much, but this year 2016 the American very big research program called the National Toxicology Program Mm -hmm. has shown an increased risk for cancer, brain tumors, as well as heart tumors, Mm -hmm. and also damage to the DNA uh, molecule in cells. And if this also holds for human beings, we are talking about in the order of 150 million extra cancer cases in the years to come and of mm. course huge costs for society mm. and huge liability issues but hopefully uh, we will soon see the development of something that i have coined as tomorrow's green human friendly or environmental friendly technology mm. but how can it be that um, in denmark for example they don't they don't say that it's dangerous Um, but uh, WHO say that it's uh, dangerous. Yes. Then what can I do? As what can I? Yeah. No, this believe? is yeah. This is very enigmatic. But um, uh, right now there is a Danish television series in Sweden called Follow the Money, and I think that really depicts a lot what it's all about mm. because most of the uh, uh, players have abandoned ship. You mentioned the World Health Organization, but also the manufacturers, the mm. operators, uh, the health insurance um, uh, institutions, and the radiation protection boards, mm. and of course the insurance companies all say that no, we won't touch this at all, mm. and that's more telling than any scientific report ever could be. Mm. So I would trust insurance companies and manufacturers when they turn away and leave mm. ship. Mm as a consumer. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but I find that quite interesting because we have the Danish Health Department and they they have access to the best scientific researchers out there, research, researchers and uh, the best journals out there when it comes to both radiation and a lot of other things. And they say that it's not nothing we have to fear. They say that it's, it's not, we don't have to worry about that at all. So well, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, as a scientist, of course, that's very strange and enigmatic to me. I also have access to both the very best scientists as well as all the reports and publications. And to me, the wind is blowing in a completely other way. And as I said, uh, the players in the field that hold the money in their hand, they have definitely abandoned ship. The insurance companies won't insure for any health damage of electromagnetic fields. The manufacturers, operators, World Health Organization and so on say, no way we will touch this. Mm -hmm. And that sends a very strong message to the consumers and citizens, a much stronger message than any health authority could do. And for instance, the World Health Organization already 2001 cancer classified power frequent magnetic fields, which is a long word for household electricity. And 10 years later, 2011, they also cancer classified all types of radio frequent fields, including all gadgets we talk about, mobile phones, 
uh, you have tablets, uh, computers, etc. Okay, fair enough. But we have uh, at the Danish University, Copenhagen University, we have a professor in in neuroscience and uh, pharmacology. Uh, he's uh, he said that it might just be that this has to do with stress. The th- the fact that we have these many tablets and phones and we're all stressed by all the messages we get on that. Oh, that's so a very fair... it's psychosomatic. Yes. Yeah, that's a very fair comment too. And of course, I hope that he and the uh, Sunde students and others here in Denmark are right, of course. But uh, that is easily investigated, the stress factors, using, for instance, tomato plants, ants, rats and so on in controlled experiments where there is no stress and they still get damaged, you know. So I don't pay very much into the stress factor. Okay, fair enough. But still, there's a big difference between plants and human beings, I guess. Or what would you say about that? Oh, yes, of course. But uh, we are talking about animal cells as well. A lot of different animal types have been investigated and their cells and our cells are very equal in build-up and function. Uh, And the thing is that some of the experiments done on rats, for instance, to initiate cancer, for ethical reasons, you cannot do it on human beings. But while we are standing here, maybe we have that kind of transformations and maybe down the road, we will see the cancer cases being collected. And therefore, for instance, to insurance companies say, no, we will not insure for this. And I was at the conference 2004 in London, and then all these different players we talked about, like the insurance companies, they said that for them, it's not the question whether there is a risk or not. It's obviously a risk. The question is only in the future, who is going to pay for the damages? And they won't pay. They say the risk is obvious? Yeah. 2004 that's 12 years ago yeah exactly that's yeah. that's a bit alarming i would say well it is and i say again your danish dr television um, program here follow the money which is about something completely different but the title is very much uh, correct you know you should always follow the money and ask yourself are there streams in society undercurrents pointing to that something is wrong and here you have such an undercurrent, which is actually flowing on the surface. If it is that dangerous, how come the big companies, uh, telecompanies and so on, they haven't been sued by uh, the parents and, and other people who were a bit apprehensive when it comes to this? The simple answer to that and the simple reason is that the manufacturers tell you in the small print that you have to keep the mobile phone at least one inch away from your body. That means that you can never touch it. The moment you open the box you have bought and takes out the mobile phone, you have violated uh, the instructions. And in a future lawsuit, they will just ask you, which hand did you actually use? Was it left or right hand? And maybe you say, well, it was mostly right hand. And they say, you couldn't, we told you keep it at least one inch away from your body. So it's impossible to sue them. And the lawsuits right now being prepared, like in the United States, it's not against the manufacturers or the operators, it's against the American state who allow this full body 24 seven exposure experiment to happen. Once again, that's a bit alarming. It is, (laughs) and I hope Uh, I say again, you know, I look upon myself as kind of a mental fire brigade soldier. Uh, And I hope, of course, as the ordinary fire brigade soldiers, that it is a false alarm, that everything is safe and that we can tell the parent there wasn't any problem. Your kid is safe. But that would also mean like in the order of 25,000 publications in peer review based scientific journals, all must be wrong at the same time. And that has never, ever happened before. 25,000? At least. At least? Yes. Where can people read about this? Um, It's on the internet and uh, they could download most of these publications from different web pages. So it's in the open access. But, you know, people, rightfully so, are occupied with other things. 
a mother would take care of a child. She doesn't have time to read and she believes that the authorities takes care of safety. And I do hope they do it. Hmm. But what will it, as I said, what will it, um, what will happen if we don't do anything? As a, if my kid is going to a class and yeah. he's sitting with a, a computer, iPad, and it's uh, connected with Wi-Fi, then what, yeah. Well, I mean, if we look on these very big American research programs, that has been ongoing for 16 years. They have spent more than 25 million US dollars on it. Uh, then the answer is very simple. It will affect the DNA and it will affect also the cancer risk. So maybe your kid somewhere in the future will get a brain tumor or a heart tumor. And also if it affects the DNA, it could have an impact on fertility. Mm -hmm. And there are very interesting studies pointing to that maybe if what one found for mice is the same as for human beings, maybe your grand, 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 grandchild will not be able to get babies because of something you did before 2016, mm -hmm. namely irradiated mm -hmm. testicles and ovaries. Mm -hmm. So as you imagine, every evening when I go to bed, yeah. I ask dear God mm. to make me wrong mm. that it is a false alarm, that all these publications are wrong. I do hope that. Mm. But what what is your, um, if you should give a good advice for me, if I have a computer at home or I want to go into the internet and yeah. my kid is seeing something yes. on the computer. The How can I protect him? What, yeah. what can I? The best advice is you should not trust me to begin with. You should do your own homework lesson by reading, mm. thinking, comparing, thinking more, read more, and then make up your mind. Should we have this or not? Mm. Because I don't want in the future someone to say, Why didn't you speak up, Ole? You had all the information in front of you. You had the brain to really understand these very mm. difficult research data. Why didn't you tell people? Mm. No, I've told you. But don't trust me. Read for yourself and then make up a strategy for your home, mm. your workplace and for schools and play center grounds and so on. Mm. So your belief is also if, for example, in Denmark they, they have Wi-Fi you know, in almost every school in Denmark, that it's also a big concern, Nick, because... It is. I get uh, very yeah. often uh, exactly. telephone calls and emails from concerned parents mm. in Denmark and in all other countries around the planet. Mm. And people are very... Well, they, they are upset, I would say, and they question whether their health authorities and radiation protection boards really work for them mm. or for their industrial interests. Mm. So here, this is, again, the word alarming is coming up in my mind. This is quite new to me. Um, do you have any last uh, advice or words for both parents, but everybody out here in the society when it comes to... Well, this? I don't think people should really be only alarmed because I also see possibilities here. Maybe Denmark will be the first country in the world to develop in practical terms what I have coined as mm -hmm. tomorrow's green human and environmental friendly technology. Uh, and I don't know, of course, how that will look like, but just imagine if Denmark could sell all mobile phones, all tablets and so on once more, but in a safe mode, then Denmark would be richer than Japan ever was. And how would that work? You say green energy or... Uh, well, not green energy, but uh, from a radiation protection point of view, that we need some other form of telecommunication device and that doesn't harm our cells and molecules, that doesn't destroy the DNA molecule, that doesn't uh, initiate cancer and so on. Mm. And do we have any solutions like that? Out there? Um, not yet, to the best of my knowledge, but I'm sure while we are talking, that a young man or woman in a garage in California, they are right now developing it, you know. So let's see tomorrow mm. or in Denmark. <laughs> Perfect. Do you have any uh, last questions before Ola has to go give yeah, the lecture? Yeah, I know uh, there are still some, but I will try. Um, you have two that, Okay. Um, 
Um, and now it's gone. <laughs> Um, I think we don't even have yeah. two minutes. Yeah, okay. No, no, it's so, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So let's Ole, stop. Yeah, thank you so stop. much. Well, thank you so much indeed. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. let's, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Sorry we went. Tak fordi du så med. Husk at dele og like vores udsendelser. Skulle du ligge inde med en videoproduktion af Ældre og Dato, du mener måtte have offentlighedens interesse, så kan du sende os en mail på redaktion snablag.dkdocs.tv Thank you.